Welcome to another episode of Reaper TV. In today's tip, we're going to be taking a look at one of the latest updates in version 5.1 of Reaper that's just come out recently. And the update we're going to take a look at is how they've improved the whole use of using stretch markers. Now, if you see my previous video on stretch markers, you'll see how easy it is and how versatile that particular function is when we want to time align and stretch and adjust audio. But the new updates really have supercharged that. So let's take a look at what it's on offer now. Okay, so I've got a track open in front of me and I'm gonna work on this particular piece of audio just to show you how this works. Now, I've already set up a shortcut for inserting stretch markers and I'm just gonna right click and I'm gonna insert a couple of markers. I'm not really too worried where these are going, I just wanna sort of show you how this works. So let's turn that off. So if I go back and I play the audio, you can listen to exactly what this is like before I start making any changes. Okay, so if I just hit play, we can take a listen to what this track sounds like before we make any adjustments. So, just a guitar. So, I've inserted a couple of stretch markers already, exactly the same way as we've done before. So let's just zoom in a little bit and take a look at how this differs from the previous versions of Reaper. Now you can see how stretch markers are inserted in there. I'm going to just uncheck the snap disabled just so I don't snap to my guidelines for this example. But you see we've now got our stretch markers exactly the same as before. But you're going to find when you take your mouse pointer over the stretch marker, you're now going to get these arrows pointed left and right. And if we go over the actual line itself, you now see we've got up and down markers. So we can not only adjust the, the length of it, we can adjust the pitch as well. So let's see how that works. So in exactly the same way as they used to work before, if we move them left or right, we now adjust their position. So we've now shortened this section and lengthened this section. And you're gonna find now that the markers give us a bit more information than they used to. You can see we've got the same sort of red and blue colors that were used in the past. The red denotes that it's been increased, the blue denotes it's been decreased. But now to make it even more obvious, you can see the line actually drops below the center mark when it's, it's increased in length and it goes above the center mark when it's decreased in length. And I'll just show you now, if I just drag this over, you can see those lines move up and down depending on how far we're stretching that particular block of information. So if we just go back and play that now, we can hear the differences. It's gonna work exactly the same as it used to. So let's just have a listen. So as you can see, it increases the speed of the one portion and reduces the speed of the other portion. So let's put that back. Let's put it back roughly where it was. Okay, so the difference that we have now is we can actually ramp this up or down. So in other words, instead of it just sort of immediately going to full speed or half speed or whatever it is, we've kind of adjusted the amount. We can now ramp that up so it increases or decreases. So if we go over the actual stretch marker, and just to go to the left or right hand side, so we're just on the line, you can see it now changes to an up and down arrow. Now it might not be particularly perfect in here, if I move over, so we could get a little bit better somewhere else. Yeah, it's not gonna show up particularly well, because I'm using white on white, but hopefully you'll see this when you sort of edit it yourself. So if I now lift this up, you can see we shorten everything Oh, we, sorry, we lengthen everything over to the right hand side and we shorten our section to the left. And as you can see, we can adjust that. So what this is gonna do is gonna ramp up the pitch or ramp up the speed as opposed to going to full speed. So if we just listen to that. So hopefully what you can tell is, I'll run it again in a second, is that it starts off considerably slower than it should be. So in other words, it's slowing it down at the beginning. When we get to this particular point in the middle, that now goes back to normal speed and then increases up to this sort of quicker speed on the right hand side. So you can see we can now create sort of a ramp effect which starts slow, goes right the way through to the actual faster speed on the right hand side, which is quite cool if you want to get creative with, uh, with the, the samples and things like that you're working with. The other thing we can do is we can actually control whether the pitch is altered or whether it stays the same. So let's take a look at how we can do that now. 
So to control this, what we need to do is make sure we're over the actual sample or track we want to work with. Right click and choose item properties. And in there we've got the option to preserve pitch when changing rate. That's checked by default, so if we uncheck that, the pitch is going to change as it reduces in speed or increases in speed. So let's just apply that and click OK. And let's go back and have a listen, and we'll find now that the pitch will change along with the speed. So, you can, you can see it starts off with a lower pitch, goes back to normal pitch as it gets to the middle point, and then increases in pitch as it increases in speed. I'm sure there's many creative ways you could work with this, and obviously if you're dealing with effects and TV and movie and stuff like that, you're probably going to have more of a, a use for it. But I thought I'd want to show you this, just to show you the, the changes that they've made to the, uh, the stretch markers in Reaper 5.1. Well, I hope you found this video useful. I hope it's given you a little insight into this update. I hope you'll find some uses for it. If you found this video useful, hit the subscribe button below. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it, a thumbs down if you didn't. If you've got any comments or feedback or questions or anything on this video, please pop those in the comment section below. We read everything you post on there. And until next time, happy mixing.